just can't get a mortgage and around here the house prices are so high. Any option. You gotta do it, you gotta do it. Wow. Kind of has clarity, it looks very beautiful, doesn't it? it this, does. These cut windows. If it was me, I think I'd put my bath right here. Kinky. Oh, what have they done? I haven't got absolutely no clue with design. Whoa. How much money have you got left? Uh, let me see. If I think too much about everything, I think, whoa! Walking through into the main living area. It's our savings and a pension. How the hell is he going to do this? It's four times the size of an average semi-detached house. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. If you work for yourself, the chances of raising a mortgage to buy a house are even slimmer. That's exactly the situation that Martin Wyman finds himself in, and I'm off to Leeds to see a bit of derelict scrubland that he's found and hopes to turn into the house of his dreams. In she goes. Cooked at 300 degrees C for approximately four minutes. In the area that I want to live, it's quite difficult to find a house, and it's just on my own space. And it's something that most people would like to try and do, and I just thought it was the right time and went ahead with it, really. to get a good sized site. But at this point now, I own the land, uh, but I don't have any money. We decided to finance the project. It's our savings and a pension. It wasn't easily lent to him. We have a promise he'll pay us back so that our pension fund is, uh, is back to where it was. So front door, into my shower room. It's not the sort of thing I would have done. I would not have taken the risk that he's taken. Just worry sometimes that he can't manage to project manage this and make a living for himself with the pizza business. It's a lot of responsibility to know that effectively I've taken most of their savings and put it into a house. But obviously I would never want to let them down, so I do worry about it, so I need to try and get it paid, paid back as soon as possible, really. Tell me how you came to find this plot and how you ended up buying it. Funny story, really. Actually, I used to live around the corner. Uh, so I've lived here for about five years in, yeah. the, in the area. It's when I started to look for 
somewhere to live. I obviously looked in the area I was and actually used to rent that second garage. These used to be a so block of garages. So this was this is a line yeah. of garages. Yeah. So I spoke to the owners to see whether they'd be interested in in selling the plot for yeah. uh, for me to put a house on. What made you want to build your own house in the first place? Obviously, the age I am, I don't really have many dependents. So I thought, if I'm going to do, if I'm going to do it, I might as well do it now. Yeah. It's going to be a, a, hopefully a family home in the future. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not really thinking about that as yet. But I didn't want to just build a small house where I wanted to, you know, if I had a family that I'm going to move out in two or three years. Are you going to get your hands dirty? What's, what's the idea? Yeah, I'm hoping to do as much as I possibly can because if I subcontracted the whole build out, you know, there's no way I could afford it. I'm just going to crack on and just try it. I actually looked at it a couple of days ago and I thought it might make quite a nice uh, children's nursery or an old folks home. <laughs> <laughs> we support him fully. It's just that we don't happen to like what he's building. <laughs> Martin's situation is familiar to so many people. He's facing exactly the problems that people in their 20s and 30s face in this country. He's chosen a really high-risk strategy to get his house done. It's a difficult site. He's trying to build a very big house and he's borrowing from mum and dad. I'm really rooting for Martin to pull this one off, but I must say I'm worried. It's a lot of house to try and build for £100,000. The first thing is, it seems huge. I mean, this is 100,000 quid, and, you know, ostensibly on paper, this looks like a 300 grand build. It's a big house by any stretch of the imagination. Let's be clear that to do anything this size for 100,000 quid is a challenge. But typically, they cost a lot of money. I mean, I know buildings back on backland sites that have cost millions. You know, we need to kind of remember that this is a 100,000 pound low cost house. My concerns inside are this looks like a conventional building inside. So um, upstairs, there's this rabbit warren of bedrooms and this conventional sort of dog leg passageway. It feels like plasterboard city, you know, and that is a problem. And one wonders, given that he's a kind of young 29 year old guy, why he can't do something a bit more dynamic with, you know, some other more interesting modern materials. Living there by himself, one wonders why he doesn't just take this wall out and perhaps, you know, reconfigure this to be one big bedroom here that with, with this fantastic with view. view. Yeah. And downstairs, he's compartmentalised this. I worry that this is actually going to be quite a dark, mean space, you know. There's, there's stuff in here you could just take out to save money, and I think certainly this wall could just go and it would be a better building mm. and a cheaper building. One can picture this painted magnolia with bullnose skirtings. Perhaps he hasn't seen great architecture of, mm. of contemporary houses, mm. you know. So for him, this is pretty radical. Yeah. I think we could mm. probably push him further by showing him some good stuff. I mean, it looks ambitious. Let's actually, you know, dare, dare I say, make him more ambitious to realise that he can do this if he's clever. If 
I was doing anything more complicated, I'd want to be able to check that I was doing it right, but I'm pretty confident I'm not doing it. So I'm mixing in a bit of concrete and flattening it out a bit. Come on, baby. I'm just trying to negotiate everything down. I mean, like the floor, for instance, I got the quote. I had like 10 minutes on the phone groveling to him, and I managed to get like three or 400 quid off. Scale-wise, it enables me to be able to be inside the house, sort of getting the plumbing and electrics in while the actual external masonry goes up. It does save quite a lot of time. These terraces circle a block, and in the heart of that block, behind all of the back gardens, is often a piece of leftover land. Look at this place, it's kind of completely overlooked. It's really narrow. It, the site slopes and it tapers, it accesses tight, and if you're a property developer, you just say, not worth it, you'll never make your margin. Pretty much been up on site for 12 hours a day the last four or five days. Just checking stuff, measuring everything. I'm never 100% confident. There's always something that can go wrong. The issue is we've got a, quite a rather large uh, crane and a rather small site. And that was just a case of trying to work out the best angle for him to come in so we can get him down the corner in the right position. Thought we might be taking off the neighbor's roof at one point. I'm really excited now to see the to see the panels here, how good they look. The whole structure of the house will be seen. You'll be able to see how, how it all works together. I'll be able to see how the rooms feel. It's going to be good. Seeing it up here now, it, it is quite big. <laughs>
Building a house is a really tough challenge, and I, I know I've done it myself with my bare hands. It can destroy you. It can destroy relationships with your partner, with your parents. It can really push you to the edge. How the hell is he gonna do this? It's four times the size of an average semi-detached house. All I see is pound signs. Doors are expensive and walls are expensive, and there's a lot of both of those here. My parents, I won't say they're not, they're not wealthy people, but I don't like asking for the money. I'll be borrowing the vast majority of the 100,000 uh, off them, so hopefully they won't be uh, struggling. When I do obviously get my mortgage and can pay them back, then I'll, I'll, I'll feel a lot better about it. It's so beautiful, so modern, so airy, so light. It might look like it's expensive to achieve this, but really it's smoke and mirrors, and that's what's so good about good design. This is just polished concrete. It's not even very good concrete. It's simply finished and polished, and it looks great. Reflecting light around the room, it's perfect. I mean, this is just plywood. It's not at all an expensive material. And what they've taken is two widths of plywood, stuck them together to give it a good thickness, and then painted it with a very light white wash to just knock it back to take that kind of woody, earthy tone out. And this is the best example of all for me. It's this wire glass, this kind of safety glass. It's probably more familiar to us from industrial buildings. You know, it's not a luxurious material, but in this large sheet size and with the light shining through it from a skylight, it suddenly becomes part of a really luxurious interior. What I hope we can encourage Martin to do is just to pare back his partition walls and just allow the space to sink. I'm looking for ways to make the spaces better and cheaper. There are all these bedrooms upstairs that appear not to benefit in any way from the fact that they're under a nice lofty bit of roof with lots of top light coming in. The worry of course is that this is going to be a rabbit warren and it's going to be dark and just by taking out some walls and taking out some doors you could save money. I can't really do any work, to be honest, in this. You know, water's coming in. I'm constantly trying to stop water coming in through the windows. And I was on the roof the other day just trying to stop rain getting in. It's not nice to think that all this water's, you know, getting everywhere, really. I am feeling a bit tired, a bit down. 
So obviously knowing Piers is going to come down and hopefully give me a little bit of advice, it'll raise the spirits and get me a bit more excited again. He knows that money is drifting through his hands. He knows there's still a lot to do, and it's very easy to feel a bit depressed now. Hi, Martin. Hi, Piers. Pleased to meet you. How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, apart from the weather. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? I had in my head that obviously that I would be doing a lot of plasterboarding and conventional finishes. You know, if you took this wall out, which I think is a no-brainer, you can imagine having a bed there, be able to lie in bed and see right the way down past these houses to that amazing view beyond. If it was me, I think I'd put my bath right here behind a sliding screen that you could sit in the bath with a beer at the end of the day looking right the way down there. Mm. How about you do that? Kinky. I suppose I'd have to uh, waterproof the floor and... Not necessarily. I mean, I'm quite yeah. messy in the bath, though. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> all, over the, all over the show. You'd lose a door, for one thing, so that's yeah. saving money. Um, you're losing a bit of wall. There's less finishing. I think also, importantly, you'd come into this space and immediately you'd feel like you're in a big, open, lofty, generous building rather than in a kind of vestibule to the main space. And so this is the wall, I think, that you could take out or at least um, take oh, out yeah. part of it. And actually, the critical thing... Unfortunately, it is a bit windy and rainy up here. I don't like the idea of having me sat in my front room and then someone coming through the front door and a, and a gust of cold air to come through. Yeah, just yeah. Just maybe stand the one in the ceiling. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of... The other thing is, I know it's a kind of big-ish house, but this is... There's still this mindset that's incredibly difficult to get out on, that houses have ordinary walls, ordinary doors, ordinary skirtings, ordinary finishes like paint and things like that. But I think in this country, that's why we lag behind the rest of the world in doing unusual buildings. One of the things I love about this house is the fact that the routes through it are really kind of exciting and dynamic and fluid, rather than a series of very rigid geometric corridors that are just at 90 degrees. And what's a delight here is that there's nothing at 90 degrees to one another. Wow. This is really just a kind of corridor that links a kitchen with a living room. But by just taking the doors out and just carrying this material through, cranking this open a bit, it feels just so much more special. You know, and you could do this at your place for actually less money than by putting doors in and dividing it up. You'd end up with something that just felt a lot more interesting and special than a conventional corridor. just being able to see up to another space, even through a kind of wall of glass, a little bit like this. So if this was your kitchen, just looking up through that stairwell up to the upstairs would just be fantastic. Definitely, and I, I like the idea of maybe using some different materials just yeah. to create a focal point in my living area, because it yeah. is such a big space, and I've got that big wall, so mm. I'll definitely have to uh, you know, think about using some different materials to yeah. just break the break the space up. Really. Yeah, so materials to kind of zone things, transparency, and then double height space. I mean, it's kind of those yeah. things, and that's almost all you need to do, really. Yeah.
you know, this stuff is cheap as anything. You've got endless stud walls in your yeah. house and actually just building in little pockets, you know, I mean, that take you, you know, very little time, very little money it's to do something space, like that. Yeah, you, yeah. And it's usable space for free, really. I like the uh, paneling as well. It's something I can do myself for a start. Really lovely. I mean, actually, oh, it acts as a kind of bed head here, yeah. you know, so you can <clears> lean <throat> against it, you know, it doesn't get stained. It's just really simple, cheap boarding painted with kind of eggshell paint. It's very similar, this wall, to, to my main bedroom as well, so I can, I can envisage this uh, going on that back wall, and not only does it save me buying a, a bed head or whatever they're called, uh, it just looks really cool as well. I've obviously got a slate roof on part of the house and I'm just thinking this section above my garage will look absolutely amazing like that. And I prefer to do that instead of rendering as well, so. We look fantastic, much, much nicer than rendering. Yeah. I think it's fantastic that you like this. I mean, one of the points of bringing you here is to actually get you inspired yeah, by yeah. things. So I'm really excited by the idea of you using this up in Leeds. really useful. It was a long drive down here, but it's been worthwhile. Obviously, you see TV shows and cell phone magazines that I've been reading, but, you know, I always think, God, those places don't exist, so to walk around, it's absolutely phenomenal. I've got some really good ideas. Having seen how he's genuinely reacted, I think his mind has been kind of blown, you know, coming to a place like this. I think there's no way he'll just go back to doing conventional things in a conventional manner at his house in Leeds. I decided definitely going to take this wall out between the two bedrooms. I'm going to start doing a bit of bashing about. It's quite enjoyable. <laughs> Even though this is obviously paid technically for this to be built, will save me, hopefully, quite a bit of money by not having to plasterboard it. Piers, uh, Piers won't be happy, though. He wants me to put a bath in this room. But We're in Leeds, man. Imagine bringing your friends around, going to the pub, and then they come round and there's a bath in their room. Hopefully when all this wind stops blowing through all the house and everything's flapping about and all the polythene I've got on the outside of the window, trying to keep it dry, I can get rid of all that and it'll start to look a bit more like a house as well. We'll be hopefully watertight soon, which is good because the weather's turning like dramatically. Hopefully within a couple of days it'll feel like an actual home instead of just a building, a bit of an empty shell. They have to get some light in somewhere. And so here you see these two huge expanses of glazing, which are the two places where you can't see anyone. You know, this is the main lounge, huge double 
French door looking out basically to this small garden that's been carved out of the site. And here, another huge expanse of glass shielded by a cleverly designed screen. So when you're in there, you can't see into anybody else's garden. It does actually feel a bit more real as opposed to just you're slogging away. There's wind coming in, rain coming in. Whereas I could sit in here now on a warm day. I mean, it's a big part of the budget, obviously. It's like 11 or 12% of the budget. So they're obviously a big deal, the windows, and uh, it's good to have them in. Nice. For the outside, you only have one opportunity to get the right stone or the right type of clad and spend a bit more on things that will be there for quite a while that you can't change after. I thought you know, I'd probably spend about three to four thousand. It's probably cost near a six, labour-wise. It's quite expensive, but they bake it so it's resistant to rot, basically, so no water can get in. And it smells really nice. It actually smells like burnt wood. He's really invested some money here. There's natural material, stone and timber. Looks good, but you know, it rings alarm bells because you know that those things cost him a bit more than he was planning. What does that leave for the interior is, is my worry. You know, how much has he spent making this beautiful envelope and what's gonna be able to be afforded? I think it's been a brilliant decision that Piers has managed to influence this building and have this slate instead of the render. This looks so much more bespoke, it looks so much more crisp. It's gonna be impervious to the weather. It's gonna be great. Well, you got a front door. Yeah. Well, obviously, I know Piers was very passionate about me opening all this up, taking out the doors there, etc. But I just thought practically, when people are coming in and out, and obviously it can be quite cold. So I guess what you're saying is us Jesse Southerners can't possibly understand I northern drafts. Don't get me wrong, it would be totally amazing to walk here. I'm, I'm not have a wall there, have, the, have, the, have a bath in the front room. <laughs> but you There's know, only so I'm far also, you're willing to go. What if I, what if I put a door line on here? and just left it open for a bit. I'll move in yeah. while I'm finishing stuff off and I'll just give it a try All right, see, do see that. what it's like. Do and... that. I managed to get a second-hand kitchen for £500 so far, but I've got to obviously buy bits and pieces yeah. extra to sort of stick it together. Everyone likes a bargain, don't they? <laughs> This wall, I had an idea. When the guys were slating the roof, they uh, had a lot of offcuts uh, of slate, so I'm thinking about using all those offcuts and having a slate wall on, on this side. Right, well. wow. 
So obviously I've got my staircase in now. Yeah, that's progress. It's going to be fantastically oh, airy. Couch. I'll have a couch here, a TV on the wall, a bedroom on this side. Yeah. So You won't want to leave this room. It's so beautiful with all this yeah. light. How much money have you got left to do this interior? Uh, let me see. <laughs> £1.50. I can lend you a couple more. <laughs> I've literally just watched every penny. Yeah. It's the worst aspect of the whole thing, if I'm honest. It's probably, it's probably taken a bit of the enjoyment off it. Yeah. I need to be able to get a mortgage, you know, to pay them back. So that's always in the back of my mind yeah. as well. Even if I earn 40, 50 pounds a day, uh, it's, it's better than nothing. Uh, it's obviously very tight and I'm spending money just to, to live at the minute, really. A good example is this morning, I needed to go to get some, uh, some drinks, because I sell drinks, but I don't have any cash in my account. A lot of the money my parents have given me, I think probably a bit of it I've spent on things like rent and... Uh, stuff for the business and all sorts recently, so just trying to do as much as I can, really. I do know that I'm going to the bank tomorrow to put some more money in his account. <laughs> the budget does, it doesn't always quite come under budget. It's sometimes, it's usually slightly over or around, so it's, it's never under. This is a fantastic space, but there's a hell of a lot to do in here. Oh, yeah. My concern is that you won't have the money all the time, and it could just drift on for sure. years. I think you could finish this building by being clever about where you get materials. The danger is you move in and nothing happens, or you spend more money over a long time doing something very conventional like plasterboard. That would be the death of this place. It I have been looking at various alternatives, mm. but if, yeah. if we can try and find somewhere I can mm. get a lot of this mm. stuff for next to nothing, then that's definitely something of interest, especially yeah. when I'm literally like at the end of my budget. I really want to find an interesting alternative to plasterboard. And I want to find an interesting alternative that allows Martin not to have to fix something, then plaster something, then decorate something. Metal as a material, I think, is completely underused. I think we can sometimes think of metal as a cold material, as something that's, that's kind of icy and, and too modern. But I think here you start to see its qualities. The whole atmosphere is about how metal goes together, how it can block the light, how it can allow light through it real creativity with a single, simple, cheap material. But actually, I think what Piers and I would like Martin to look at is materials that have a story to them. Maybe they're reclaimed materials, or maybe like in this case, it's just that beautiful patina of the galvanising process that adds so much quality to it.
It's an old BBC transmission station that's being uh, effectively demolished and all the materials put aside for either scrapping or recycling. I want to scavenge as much interesting sheet material as we can possibly get for Martin to at least be able to line the whole of his bedroom and perhaps part of that upstairs hall. I just can't bear the idea of it being a plasterboard city. What an amazing place. It's so dramatic to see this stuff. This stuff is worthless. It's just been chucked here. But the potential to use this stuff in buildings is, is immense priceless to a self-builder. It's absolutely priceless. So this looks incredible and I would love to be able to use this in, in a building somehow. I suspect we can't fit this in Martin's house, let alone persuade Martin to put it into his house, but actually a lot of the other stuff here we could use. You can imagine using that in on a whole wall, this, this beautiful, shiny, tiled material, I think would look, would look incredible. These things are great too. I can imagine using this instead of ceramic tiles. This tension wire has no commercial value. It's just been chucked in a pile to be skipped. But I think that Martin could use this to make a handrail out of. These things are beautiful and so fantastically engineered compared to a horrid beige plastic uh, extractor shroud or something. I think Martin could use this flat sheet material to line a wall with. It doesn't need finishing, it doesn't need painting, it doesn't need any fire retardant. It's robust, it's beautiful. So this is what we've come for, to get some of this. This is exactly the stuff, looks in good condition, big flat areas, a couple over there would be great, there's big long ones. This is absolutely perfect. This is what Martin's bedroom ceiling could look like. And I think that's priceless, it's fantastic. This or Magnolia? What would you choose? I'd choose this. I hope Martin does. The danger, of course, is we turn up to Martin's place with a van full of this and he looks at it and hates it, but that's the risk worth taking, I think. So if we come here tomorrow, that would have gone, probably. Yeah, it would have been. If you need it, you can have it as it is. I was actually trying to tidy my garden up. Uh, <laughs> and I don't quite know what I'm going to do with it, but Piers is on his way up to uh, apparently make that look good. I thought it'd be like plain sheets as opposed to broken down chimneys or something or whatever it is. Bit of an eyesore, isn't it? <laughs> Not convinced at the minute, but we'll see, won't we? It's a bit of a clean up. A bit of a clean up. Let's have a go at just cleaning it up with this and seeing you know, how it comes up. See, that is quite nice. Yeah, and that's, you know, a minute, so five minutes per sheet. I think it might look good on this wall. Yeah. 
I hold that there, I mean, you get a sense now, don't you? I think this wall, if you do it right up to there, would look fantastic in this stuff. When I first saw the stuff piled in, in the back garden, and I just thought it looked like a load of junk. But once it starts to look like, you know, that it might fit together and form some sort of panelling, then, yeah, I can see there could be something there. Now we've put the two panels together, obviously we can see it's pretty easy to sand down. Uh, I think it could look really good. I think I'd be OK to work out how to put it up as well. My mum and dad won't like it. By the time I come and see Martin's house next, I'm hoping that this stuff will be upstairs, beautifully polished, on his wall, fixed in a nice arrangement, looking great. It's what dads do, isn't it? They like to keep an eye on them. Some more. So what are you doing? You, you're plasterboarding the, the roof and tiling the inside. <laughs> I like wallpaper. Anaglypta. <laughs> worried about it and wondering what the hell I was going to do with it. So now I'm just going to give it a go. The whole point of this is to have it to look as it is. Just cut this section out on each one. What's the finish going to be anyway? That, that's it. <laughs> Hi Martin, boys, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Looks like a building. Looks great. I mean, it's an amazing achievement, especially yeah. with these expensive materials and so on. You've put a lot of effort yourself into to keeping the cost down here. Yeah, well, if, when you look at different materials, things like originally I was looking at sort of rendering this wall, etc. You know, by the time you've got the labour cost, you know, I managed to slate a lot of that. So I think if you can maybe incorporate and do a bit more yourself, then that's where you manage to save the money. So this is the living room. This is just great. What an amazing space. Thank you. I really like the way that you've embraced the idea of natural materials on the interior. You've really yeah. tried to push yourself and, and get that right. I took the inspiration for this wood uh, from the house that we went to visit, the Hovering House, and I just absolutely loved it when I saw it. This really hangs together and it really unifies this space. I wasn't sure whether it used, uh, I'd used it a bit too much, but I think it brings the three sort of areas together really nicely. I also particularly like the way you've embraced timber in another form with this palette. Tell me about this amazing table. 
I'll be totally honest, this is my most prized possession. It is. Now, yeah. <laughs> I, actually, that was, uh, that was delivered with some plasterboard. And I just saw it in the garage and I thought, you know, I've not got a coffee table. So I brought it in here, I stuck some legs on it and hey presto. I don't know whether I do it slightly to annoy my dad because as soon as he sees it, he's like, what <laughs> best place for that is on fire in the garden type thing. I really like the floor. I hope this is the finish. I didn't intend it on being the finish. It was a bit of a mistake, to be honest. I painted it temporarily, uh, but actually I quite like it now. I sanded it down and it, it looks a little bit patchy, but I've grown to really like it, actually. It's got interesting and... It's full of character. I mean, this is the sort of thing that you would see in a New York lot. So, the kitchen, yeah. Martin, I mean, I know that you didn't spend a lot of money on this, but tell me how much you would say this whole kitchen cost you. I think including the yeah, uh, sort of the sink and the oven and hob, I think we were looking at about 1,300 quid. That's that a cheap kitchen, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, things like that splash back. You know, you could go and buy that from a kitchen place and it'd be £70. I just phoned a metal worker and said, have you got a sheet of aluminium? They cut it and it was £10. It's nice to know that you're getting it for as cheap a value as possible, but as, obviously to make sure I'm happy with it as well, so... Yeah. And I am. I remember we had a little battle over here. Yeah. I wanted you to leave this wall out. Mm. But this looks great, like this. Coming in and seeing straight through yeah. is really, really nice. And it yeah, makes definitely. it seem much bigger. When I open the door now and I see all the way through, mm. there's no way I would want to, to ever put a door on and change that now. What a fantastic space this has turned into. Thank you. Look at this height and the natural light from all these different directions. It's really beautiful. Making the decision to lose a bedroom was quite big, but I think now I'm in here and it's such a wow factor for people to come in or, you know, when people see it. And it's just a lot more special, really. So I'm really, really, really pleased that I did that, yeah. Probably the best decision I've made so far. You know, I wasn't sure about it probably till the point where I actually put the last couple of pieces on. When I first heard Piers talk about the idea of the metal and obviously when it got delivered, I just thought this is, you know, it's not going to work. My dad thought it was ridiculous. But now it's on, I absolutely love it. I love the character. I've started using sort of the worse pieces to get a bit of character within the centre of it. And I sort of did it as a bit of a patchwork, which was probably a little bit different from what we originally discussed. I'm incredibly pleased to see this wall here. At times, I doubted that Martin would do this, but we can't underestimate just what a huge leap Martin has taken to use a material like this. He's come from a conventional house building background. He's building an unconventional house, and he's using a radically unconventional material here in his bedroom. What I'd hoped to see, though, was a bath in this corner instead of a drum kit. I'd imagine being able to bathe and look down here I'm trying not to imagine you bailing in that, <laughs> in that position, actually. I'm sure the neighbours are, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I think that was probably one step far for me, to be mm. honest. But the drum kit works. I used to have a drum kit when I was a kid in my bedroom, so... No, this is good. Yeah. But it has been hard. It's been harder than I thought it would be. It's taken longer than I thought it would. And obviously, I'm split between doing this and the business, and it's been stressful in terms of uh, just trying to keep an eye on everything. I was kind of constantly worried about it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I was, like, constantly worried, not just financially, but, you know, just general just stress. Tell me again what your original budget was, what you thought you'd build this for, and where you are now. I've spent 
probably 102,000 now. I've been able to apply for a mortgage, so I'm just waiting for the survey to go through and hopefully I'll get to be able to pay them a bit of money back. That must be so satisfying. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's nice nice to, to, get, that, uh, to get that out of the way. Does it feel like a home now? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think I'm surprised, really, to be honest, how, how homely it feels. So I hope that other people feel that when they come as well. One of those projects where you, you see it from the start on paper and you think it's never going to happen and then you actually see it now and think, wow. I like it. I think it's very Martin and different, bit of texture, it's nice. Oh, I'd love one like this, yeah, of course I would, definitely. It's four times the size of my place, yeah. When I saw the plans and we looked at it, we thought, wow, what is this? You know, it just looked like an old folks home. It'd be a, <laughs> a, a dentist surgery or whatever, but uh, I think it far outweighs what I expected. I didn't think it would look as good as it does. What did you first think, though, when he started putting tiles on the wall and putting bits of metal on the wall? When he told me it was for the wall, I just couldn't believe it, but now I've seen it, I do quite like it. it the, more, the more I look at it, the more I'm... Yeah, I do like it. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I keep forgetting that this building cost £100,000. This feels like a special, interesting piece of architecture, and I had to keep pinching myself and reminding that this only cost £100,000. I think the big lessons for, from Martin's build are really just about courage and courage of your convictions. And I think that Martin has the best of both worlds now. He has a house that he really believes in that I think is a good contribution to its site, but it also in, internally really reflects Martin. I mean, it's definitely his house. Couldn't be anybody else's. And I believe he'll live there for a very long time as a result. I think it really makes me feel at home. I'm really pleased with what I've achieved. I've obviously still got bits and pieces left to finish off, and then I can sit back and really, really be pleased and, and chill out and make, get back to normal life and, and be proud of what me and my dad and, and my mum have, have basically done, yeah. Thank you very much. Martin and well, his family. family. Time to cry. <laughs> I don't know who to go to for what. If Timothy doesn't understand what she's doing, take control, there isn't going to be a house.